that is a big open question right now of whether or not the platform moats will continue to be the shark infested moat that they've been, or they become like a little puddle. How does society more broadly come along for the ride of, you know, growth and equity? Can crypto and altcoins and tokens and all these things help provide a more equitable environment? You were talking about Dribble, you know, the network effects, the stickiness of that business. Is that something which ha has been much harder to find that, that you're seeing these kind of community driven businesses where there's two sides to it of some sort or another? Is it just a matter of where you look? It's kind of industry or vertical dependent, or it's just, it's really just all bespoke. Any, any kind of trends you've seen um, change as it relates to that stickiness factor and how it manifests itself? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest question mark at this point is the crypto stuff, which I, honestly I'd largely dismissed. I I was quite interested in Bitcoin um, almost ten years ago, and I think it's quite fascinating as a technology. But we've been waiting for it to be fully baked, and I don't know if it is yet. But I think one of the really interesting things to think about uh, as a platform owner is, um, you know, for the first time ever. Um, with with the idea of issuing crypto tokens and all this kind of stuff, you can create a community where the owner of the platform and the users are directly aligned. And what I mean by that is um, if you were an early driver on Uber, let's say that you were the one of the first 10 drivers, you got paid $30 an hour and that's the only way you benefited. Whereas Uber benefited massively from you being on the platform and they all made billions of dollars. And so I think um, with with what's happening in crypto, there's going to be platforms that spring up where the early users have an incentive where they can get rich by playing a part in the community. And so uh, you know, as the owners of Dribble, for example, we're thinking a lot about how we can uh, be defensive there because somebody could probably create a Dribble competitor. And normally, let's let's say today someone started to dribble competitor. Well, I'd probably laugh, right? I'd say, okay, good luck getting all these users to come over. Um, you know, uh, I don't know how you're going to convince um, the top thousand designers in the world to go somewhere where there's nobody looking at their work. The reason people go to dribble is they like the community that's already there. There's a network effect, um, and people uh, get massive exposure. You know, they have like millions of designers that check it daily. So why would they move over to this new platform? The difference would be that if they created a new dribble that's based on a crypto token, you can go to all these thousand designers and say, look, I'm going to give you this token. And as the platform becomes larger and larger, the token is going to become increasingly valuable. And so you can get rich along with us, the platform owners. And I think that is a big open question right now of whether or not the platform moats will continue to be the, um, you know, the the kind of shark infested moat that they've been, or they become like a little puddle. Um, and I don't know. That's the big question mark for us. And we're really bashing our heads against this and and thinking about it long and hard. Um, I I don't know. I mean, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I I think what you're saying there is by by. by providing not not literal equity but you know if you if you broaden the conversation to seen to to say a, you know a bigger debate in society is you know how does society more broadly come along for the ride of you know growth and equity versus you know just the in this in this instance it would be you know the founders and the early employees that get a lot of that literal equity but can crypto and altcoins and tokens and all these things help provide a more equitable environment so you have utility based tokens that now the initial users are just naturally going to amass a bunch of those and presumably as the rise of the platform uh, grows then those tokens will also uh, increase in value and you know is that a strong enough kind of monetary subsidy that it could help to attract um, or tip the scale of penetrating certain network effects on either the demand and or the supply side from some of these really you know winner take all type of communities it's a fantastic question 
what is to stop? Well, tech monopolies are a completely different story. But what would be to stop a dribble from uh, issuing its own coin and trying to get out in front of that? Or maybe that's exactly what you're considering, right? Well, this is exactly what we're thinking about. And, you know, we've looked at everything from NFTs, for example. And again, these are all things that there's a huge hype cycle around them right now. They're kind of digital beanie babies at this point, and I don't want to pay them too much attention. But we've contemplated, for example, um, you know, we've got the world's most creative designers. Uh, you know, I'm sure they'd want to make digital art and and sell it on the platform. Is that something we can do? And the beauty of a business like Dribble is it's what I call an airport business. And what I mean by that is it's a place where um, if you want to fly somewhere, you got to go to the airport, got to hang out there for at least an hour and uh, wait in the lobby before flying to your destination. And Dribble is a place where people naturally congregate. And if you want to congregate with the world's best designers, you go to Dribble. And so just like an airport, there's a whole bunch of different stalls and you can choose who to rent those to. You can give them to a taco shop, a massage parlor, a wine bar, whatever it is. And so on our platform, we can continue to roll out and add on you know, new revenue lines. And we've looked at NFTs, we've looked at issuing tokens, like partly as a defensive mechanism. I think the concern is that we could ruin the platform and piss a lot of people off by adding a financial incentive to it. I think right now people go to Dribble because they feel good, they wanna get feedback on their work, they wanna see what's trending and kind of find the new design, um, uh, kind of like where, where design is going and stuff. And I think as soon as you start attaching monetary stuff and weird incentives to that, it can ruin a community. So we're, we wanna be very, very thoughtful. But we're in a very privileged position to be able to add that kind of stuff if we want to. Yeah, I had um, uh, another guy on the show somewhat recently founded a company called Library, and they have um, a a content platform like a YouTube competitor called Odyssey. And so you can get the Library coin. Their blockchain protocol allows you to basically create a YouTube clone, and Odyssey is their kind of vertical application on, you know, built on top of this protocol and the library token helps to kind of power all of that and, and all this kind of stuff. And it's a top 5,000 website in the United States. And, you know, they've raised $7 million uh, and then they got subpoenaed by the SEC uh, because the SEC came after them and, and, and now it's spilled over into the public and we had them on the show to talk about it. Um, but, you know, the SEC accused him of of profiting off of their coin. And then that's frozen their ability to raise money and all these kinds of things. This is the question is, what's the difference between a coin and a marketable security? Right. So if I issue equity, you know, could I just issue equity to all my early early um, users? And the answer is yes. But the paperwork would just be a complete nightmare. And it's not liquid and you know it's just a total pain in the ass i think the liquidity and the the kind of decentralized trust is what's so interesting the the most interesting um startup i've seen that kind of embodies this new idea is brain trust have you seen brain trust i'm uh, looking it up so brain trust is basically upwork right so you go to their website and it just looks like a better designed upwork and upwork is basically uh, a marketplace for freelance work. So you can go on there and hire a developer or an assistant or you know what, whatever you need, kind of knowledge work. And you go to the braintrust.com website and it just says access the world's most talented freelancers, no middleman, no markups, no hassle. And I saw that and I went, well, how is there no middleman or markups? They must be charging fees. And what's really fascinating about this is that they aren't. So I started digging into this and essentially what they do is they issue tokens to everybody involved, right? So uh, when, when a customer comes on, the, uh, the people who match them to talent are given a token and then all the users or all the, um, all the providers are also paid in this same token. And so the idea, again, is that you're aligning incentives amongst everybody and that by doing so, you can essentially remove fees, right? So it's, it's just very, very interesting. And I don't know if this is going to work. Um, you know, it's a, it's a hard model, obviously, doing supply and demand, but seeing stuff like this is quite interesting. It needs to be baked in as just like any product feature or product add-on that it feels a part of the experience and it was destined for that use case. So I think maybe 
that's the silver bullet is if you can figure out a seamless way to weave it in, then the value prop, the value prop clicks and it doesn't detract from the product and the experience that users get when going. And you can hopefully deliver on the premise that, hey, we're going to have a more equ equitable future for everyone, whether you're a founder or employee um, or early user, we're all going to share in this upside. So, you know, maybe these guys uh, will will be able to thread that uh, thread that on through. But I think conceptually it makes sense with the caveat being if you are going up against a tech monopoly, then, you know, all uh, all exceptions and caveats now apply and you're in a completely different battlefield um, than uh, than kind of like normal platform wars. Well, and I think the thing everyone needs to remember is all those platforms have the option to do the exact same thing, right? I, I think it's a feature, not a product. And that if there's dinosaur tech companies who can't uh, adapt with that, they might be disrupted. But at the end of the day, if you have the largest community of people in a certain area, or you have just a you know fire hose of traffic or whatever it is, you can always layer this in. Hi, I'm Alex. Thanks for watching the show. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, but even better, make sure to follow us on Odyssey, follow us on Rumble, and text us 203-646-5159. Text the word Monopoly. You'll be subscribed. You'll get updates about when we're going live, our latest videos, and we'll send you even a little goodie bag. And in the event that we all get banned from big tech, we'll still be connected.